The world is divided into four spheres, each sphere divided into continents and nations, each nation divided into borders and interests. These interests divide the news. We examine the impact of these divisions on people and power. This is Imaginary Lines. Welcome to the program. I'm your host, Chris Spanos, coming up on the show. Philosopher Herbert Marcuse's book, One Dimensional Man, was published 50 years ago in 1964. The book helped spark worldwide student and social movements of the time. Brandeis University is commemorating the book October 1st and 2nd. I'll speak with sociologist Laura J. Miller about how the book applies to today's consumer culture and social media. But first, a look at how English media have reported on Latin America. On September 10th, Latin America celebrated one of its greatest modern benchmarks. Representatives from a block of 10 countries met in Caracas, Venezuela to assess 10 years of regional integration under the agreement, the Bolivarian Alliance for the Peoples of our America. Also known as ALBA, the alliance seeks to bring together countries in the region to chart a people-centered, independent development path that challenges the business-centered U.S. free trade blocs, such as the North American Free Trade Agreement. While representatives of ALBA met in Caracas to assess 10 years of progress, English-speaking media was silent on the issue. The Guardian UK, the Washington Post, the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, and other major media provided zero coverage of the event. At the gathering, General Secretary of ALBA, Bernardo Alvarez, highlighted the findings of a report that monitored the progress of regional integration carried out over the last decade. He stated, there is no doubt that since the creation of ALBA, Latin America has become increasingly more unified with respect to sovereignty, autonomy, and independence. Herbert Marcuse was one of the most important social and political thinkers of the 20th century. He was an internationally renowned philosopher and an important force for the student movement and new left worldwide in the 60s and 70s. Brandeis University is commemorating Marcuse's book with their conference, The Many Dimensions of Herbert Marcuse, October 1st and 2nd. Laura J. Miller is a professor of sociology at Brandeis. She teaches mass communication and consumer culture. Hello, Laura, and welcome to Imaginary Lines. Founder of the Frankfurt School of Philosophy, Herbert Marcuse's book, One Dimensional Man, was published 50 years ago in 1964. In a nutshell, what was his book about? Yes, it's, it's a book of social criticism and cultural criticism where he talks about what he calls one-dimensional thought, meaning a kind of way, a kind of consciousness uh, that is highly affirmative of the status quo and the ways in which a population has often in some ways simply been bought off by material comforts and mass entertainments into supporting that uh, status quo. Now, Marcuse's work, and particularly One Dimensional Man, played an important role in the international student movement and the creation of the new left in the 60s. What was it about Marcuse's work that resonated so deeply with youth at the time? Well, I think it was a combination of both his work and his writings and who he was as a person and the kind of support he gave, a uh, very active support to various uh, uh, social movements taking place at the time. He was an inspirational figure, uh, as I say, both personally and, and in his writings and his critiques as represented in One Dimensional Man and others of his work, uh, I, I think uh, resonated with especially young people who were very angry and tired of uh, the kind of conformity they saw around them, uh, the kinds of uh, 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 almost totalitarian institutions that they felt that they were being forced to be part of. And while his work doesn't necessarily offer a path clear path towards liberation, he certainly supported uh, the kinds of activities that people engaged in in order to achieve uh, a more free society. And 
let's look at how Marcuse's ideas apply today. Marcuse was looking at in, an advanced industrial society of his time, and today, advanced information technology is one of the defining characteristics of our era. What does Marcuse's one-dimensional man tell us about our period of information technology, social media, and consumer culture? Well, I think in some ways Marcuse's ideas are more applicable than ever. Uh, he had a great deal to say about the problems of technology, the ways in which uh, uh, people end up serving technology rather than the other way around, and the ways in which technology today, including the kinds of uh, social media technologies you mentioned, uh, they're, they're highly fetishized that people go gaga over this stuff without thinking about the ways in which, uh, what it is that they might be giving up. Uh, for Marcuse, one of, the, uh, one of the things that people have given up in their pursuit of consumer pleasures and mass entertainment is the ability to think for themselves. One of the things that was so exciting about Marcuse's book was that he assumed a position that a historical alternative to both capitalism and the state socialism of the 20th century was possible. And I'm wondering how this starting position is relevant to today's world. I think it might be a little bit more difficult today to um, see uh, see where the alternatives lie. Uh, Marcuse was writing at a time when revolutions were happening around the world, when uh, stu the student movement, the civil rights movement, many other movements were certainly making very clear social changes. Um, uh, today, the forces of containment, as Marcuse put it, uh, are, are probably smarter about being able to quash true fundamental change, uh, where and as well uh, certain kinds of experiments that we've seen around the world in trying different systems have not necessarily come to um, a good end. Thank you very much for joining me on Imaginary Lines, Laura. Thank you. The Palestine Prisoner Study Center has warned of an Israeli attempt to cover up crimes committed against Palestinians by jailing journalists. At least 12 Palestinian journalists are currently being held in Israeli prisons without trial, according to the center. In its monthly report released on September 6th, the center also explained that Israeli forces detained two other journalists and summoned three more for interrogation in August. Meanwhile, the Association of Palestinian Radio and TV Channels said that at least 17 journalists were killed by Israeli airstrikes during its Operation Protective Edge against the Gaza Strip. Israel's Operation Protective Edge killed over 2,000 Palestinians. The overwhelming majority of those deaths were civilians. That's it for today's Imaginary Lines. I'm your host, Chris Spanos. Thanks for watching. Please join me next week.